Hey everyone. So I had to make this video. I think I've made another video kind of insinuating this, but um, I, I wanted to make a video really pointing out the point that I was trying to make in my other video because I think a lot of people missed it when I did my other video. So this is from Denise Minger's um, blog post here. I'll just show you the website there if you want to go to it. Um, and I'll link it down below because she's the one who pointed this out. And I think it's a very, very important point because T. Colin Campbell claims in his rat studies, and if you've watched um, any of the things on T. Colin Campbell, like forks over knives or any of that stuff, um, it talks about his rat studies and how animal proteins seem to quote unquote turn on cancer and plant protein seemed to turn off cancer. However, this is T. Colin Campbell's study right here. Effect of dietary protein quality on development of aflatoxin B1 induced hepatic preneoplastic lesions. Okay, published in 89. Pretty old paper. But I can't access this paper, so that's why I'm showing you Denise Minger's blog instead. But she accessed it, obviously. And she talks about how, like, in... In some of his studies, it, it did show that when, when you gave the animal protein, cancer could be kind of turned on when you also expose to the cancer-causing agent, which is aflatoxin, which is um, like a toxin found in rice, I believe. Or is it peanuts? Anyway, something. And when you gave the gluten, which is a plant protein, less cancer growth, okay, than the casein. Casein was the animal protein he, he uh, used. But get this, she says, when lysine, the limiting amino acid in wheat, okay, what does that mean? It means that plant proteins are not all complete, right? There's going to often be a limiting amino acid because um, they're not complete. So in wheat, lysine is limited. There's less lysine than all the other proteins, okay? It's the one that you have to kind of eat enough lysine to get the full protein benefit, if that makes sense, because all the other proteins are just kind of extra up until the lysine, if you saw it in a graph. Anyway, I can't really, <laughs> uh, that's kind of how that works, okay? When lysine was restored to make gluten a, a, gluten a complete protein, so they added in extra lysine, the rats had just as much cancer occurrence as the casein group. So when you make gluten into a complete protein as casein is, then cancer can be turned on and turned off with either plant or animal protein. It doesn't matter. The, the saving grace of the plant protein is that there is a limiting amino acid and therefore you're basically eating less protein. It's just a eating less kind of thing. Campbell thus deduced that it's the amino acid profile itself responsible for spurring cancer growth because most forms of plant protein are low in one or more amino acids called the limiting amino acid and animal protein is complete. Campbell concluded that animal protein but not plant protein must encourage cancer growth. Time to whip out the veggies and burgers, <laughs> the, the veggie burgers. That's... Um, of course, this conclusion has some gaping logical holes when applied to real life. Unless you consume nothing but animal products, you'll be ingesting a mix, of, a mixed ratio of amino acids by default, since animal foods combined with plant foods still yield limiting amino acids. So unless you're on a carnivore diet, <laughs> um, you're eating both plants and animals, your protein is not going to be all complete proteins, right? The rats in Campbell's research consume casein as their only protein source. This sounds a lot like a carnivore diet. The equivalent of someone eating zero plant protein for life. An unlikely scenario. <laughs> this article was probably written a while ago before the carnivore craze started. Moreover, certain combinations of vegan food, like grains and legumes, have complementary amino acid profiles, restoring each other's limiting am amino acid and resulting in protein that's complete or nearly so. Would these food combinations also spur cancer growth? How about folks who pop a daily lysine supplement after eating wheat bread? If Campbell's conclusions are correct, it would seem vegans could also be subject 
for the cancer-promoting effects of complete protein, even when eschewing all animal forms. Okay, I'm going to go over one last part of this blog because it's really interesting. So Campbell um, did another experiment, okay? T. Colin Campbell, the one who wrote the China study, did another experiment. And it was called the effect of intake of fish oil and fish protein on the development of L as a serine induced preneoplastic lesions in the rat pancreas. Now, preneoplastic means the tumor that the um, the growth that occurs before a tumor. Okay, so they fed one group of rats casein plus corn oil, one fish plus corn oil, and one fish oil plus fish protein. And they all received about 20% protein, 20% fat. And it's funny because when they're doing the background of the study, the authors say that fish protein resulted in a reduced tumor yield when compared to other proteins. That's just in the, you know, like the introduction section or whatever of the study. But it's funny that T. Colin Campbell's paper would have said that, and yet he still claims that animal protein is horrible. But anyway, um, let's skip to the results here. It says, According to the study, both the casein corn oil and fish corn oil groups had significant preneoplastic lesions, okay, the ones with corn oil. And that she says it's not surprising because this um, corn oil is associated with preneoplastic lesions in rats, okay? It is um, um, immediately apparent, this is the actual conclusion of the study. So the number of AACN, these are the lesions, per cubic center and the mean diameter and mean volume were significantly smaller in the fish protein and fish oil group compared to the corn oil groups and no carcinomas in situ were observed in the fish oil with fish protein group. In other words, um, the cancer-inducing properties of fish protein, if there are any to begin with, she says, were neutralized by the presence of the fish oil. So fish is so protective because not only does it have, because um, the because of the oil basically in the fish protects against any bad effects that the protein might have. This means that even if all animal protein behaves like casein under certain circumstances, its effect on cancer depends on what other substances accompany it. Animal protein is therefore not a universal cancer promoter, only a situational one at best. Number two, fish protein plus fish fat starts to resemble a whole fish, right? Campbell just demonstrated that animal protein may indeed operate differently when consumed with its natural synergistic components. So anyway, <laughs> this is a great, great synopsis here. Basically, T. Colin Campbell showed that all protein, all protein, including plant protein, is capable of causing neoplastic lesions, pre pre-tumor lesions, and fish is the best thing to eat if you're going to eat a protein, really, because it has that protection. Now, you could eat plant protein with omega-3 oils, perhaps that would work too, or plant protein with a DHA supplement, perhaps that would work too, but fish is your like whole food source of that. If you're looking for a whole food diet, which is what he promotes, fish is the best one. Fish wins again.